Just days until the election, Republican Glenn Youngkin pulling ahead of Democrat Terry McAuliffe in the Virginia governor's race. That brand new Fox News poll, Youngkin now leading McAuliffe by eight points. And check this out, education, the number one issue, major in the race. Virginia parents backing McAuliffe by 10 points two weeks ago. Now they go for Yunkin by 14. That's not all. A Washington Post scholar survey shows that in September, education voters favored McAuliffe by 33 points. Now they tilt Yunkin by nine. And it all started when McAuliffe made this remark about parents when it comes to schools. I'm not going to let parents come into schools and actually you take books out and make their own decisions. I don't think parents should be telling schools what they should teach. Uh, welcome now, Josh Kroshar, National Journal columnist. Just, Josh, just weigh in on what you've seen in these polls. It's astonishing, but maybe not so surprising. Yeah, I mean, Glenn Youngkin has single-handedly used the issue of education, and, and specifically taking on extremist views on the left in education, whether it started out last year with keeping schools closed um, with no option to be in, in, having in-person learning for most of the year, to the curriculums really being age inappropriate for a whole lot of students and parents getting very upset, to getting rid of you know gifted and talented programs, or, or, or at one of the top schools in the country, they got rid of the admissions test that really set the high standards for one of the the top science and technology schools in Fairfax. And some of these issues resonate with conservatives, some of them resonate with moderates, some of them even resonate with Democrats. The frustration about about the state of the education system in Virginia, and Youngkin has been able to really capitalize on all these issues by pointing out that one gaffe that that Terry McAuliffe made at the second debate where he said that parents should be secondary to the interests of school systems, school administrators, and school boards. And boy, that's gotten him in a whole lot of trouble. It's, you know, changed the race from a, a McAuliffe lead to one that, you know, where it looks like Duncan has all the momentum at the late stage of this race. And it's showing how potent the issue of education and, and, and specifically how far the teachers unions have gone and, 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 and some of the progressive activists within the education movement have, have gone and alienated a whole lot of parents from all political stripes. Right, because it's anathema to Democrats to say anything against the teachers unions. And that was very clear and that continues, certainly in the state of Virginia. Uh, one thing I want to point out, Youngkin did from the beginning was running on schools, knowing that it was an important issue in, and also pocketbook issues in the state, but more accountability for schools, really standing up against the critical race indoctrination. And then uh, more charter schools that, Virginia has been falling behind as like in terms of charter schools is one is one of the lowest states in the nation. And Terry McAuliffe has a record as governor of Virginia, and he vetoed three school choice bills. Uh, he was in office when the Department of Education first started pushing critical race theory. And of course, McAuliffe has denied that. But I, I think that where one thing that has really hurt McAuliffe is the fact that President Obama showed up in the last week and told parents that their outrage was essentially fake, that their concerns were made up. We don't have time to waste on your phony problems, is what he said, that what it actually is happening is not happening. And I think that that hurt McAuliffe as much as what McAuliffe said about parents don't really have a say-so in the schools. Yeah, I mean, isn't that gaslighting at, at its very finest? I mean, you're, you're literally telling voters, and again, I, I think they actually, the McAuliffe campaign and a lot of Democrats actually assume that it's only very conservative voters that are upset with, with the state of the school systems in Virginia. It's not the middle of the road parents who are just, just have seen what, what's happened with the curricula and what happened when schools are closed for, for nearly a whole school year. Uh, and there's a little bit of a bubble mentality. They don't seem to be familiar with what's actually going on with schools and education in, in, in the state of Virginia. And, you know, it's always good politically to understand, to feel the pain, to understand someone's problems without mocking them, without calling them racist. And McAuliffe, you know, has been addressing concerns about curriculum by calling uh, any of those concerns from frustrated parents 
a racist dog whistle. That's been the consistent message from the McAuliffe campaign. And I think he badly misreads the, the Virginia electorate that this is not, these concerns are not just coming. I mean, I, I think it, it, it's incorrect in any sense, but it's certainly not coming just from the right or, or from people with, with, with political agendas. It's coming as a genuine grassroots opposition from moderate minded parents who have seen what, what, what have, what's taken place during the pandemic, saw the school closures, saw the move leftward with curricula. And really, have 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 had it. Have been fed up with, with the state of the state of the school system. And Yunkin, I'll point out, was endorsed by the Hampton Roads Black Caucus. It, it was a, a group that supports candidates who lift up the black community. I, I want to get your reaction before we go. This effort to kill a Fox News story. One of our reporters emailed a McCall of spokesperson about the campaign hiring the Elias Law Group, which was started by an attorney who has previously challenged elections. And the campaign spokesman accidentally emailed back mistakenly to Fox saying, can we try to kill this? It's not, I don't think it's shocking that a campaign would try to kill an unflattering story, albeit true, but one they don't want to appear. But what is unusual that somebody dumb enough to email the actual reporter with this that doesn't understand the difference between reply and reply all potentially could be helping run the state of Virginia. Well, look, that stuff happens. I, I've been on the receiving end of emails that weren't intended for me, and I, I feel, I mean, I think it's more revealing about what they said. Instead of replying and giving a response to the Fox News reporter, they want to kill the story. They want to blow him off. Um, I know I know Fox has had trouble, like, even getting answers from, from the McAuliffe, McAuliffe himself, um, you know, in, in response to serious uh, issues. He, there, was, there was a local news interview he did in Washington a couple weeks ago where he didn't like the tenor of the questions and just decided to cut off the interview a little bit prematurely. But look, this stuff happens. Mark Elias has represented a lot of Democratic candidates just to, to, as, as their attorney. I, I don't know how, how, how significant that is in the, in the grand scheme of things, but the fact that they don't want to talk to Fox, they don't want to actually respond to press inquiries, that, that's maybe the bigger story, that they're in the bubble and they're not realizing there's a lot, lot of voters out there that are up for grabs in this election. Well, that's kind of how the Democrats, being a Virginian myself, how the Democrats, more and more as the years went on, those in control, you know, it, it's like DC 2.0 in Northern Virginia, the Democrats always ignored much of the state. It was always about the area right around Washington, DC, maybe some pockets of Richmond and the Tidewater area. But if they, they have ignored the vast majority of the people in the state for years, and meantime, people are waking up to realize that our job growth in that state has trailed dramatically, say, in North Carolina, because they're not really, well, they're not pro-business. They're not anything. They're just pro-power, their own power. Josh, great to see you. Thank you so much. Thanks, Tegan. Take care.